Hello and welcome to a very brief overview of MLA documentation for your upcoming research paper. Um, there's so much more that I could do with this. A lot of times though, students experience a real quick fatigue level with instruction on this type of thing. So I'm going to go real fast, cover a few things. You've got an exercise to complete in conjunction with this. A lot of times it's just good to go and, and get some practice. Some of you, depending on your high school experiences, may be you know, super comfortable with this already. Others who maybe been out of school for a while or went to a high school where they didn't do this kind of stuff might be a little baffled by it. So make sure you come to me with questions. Um, and don't forget, if you do come in for a conference next week, that'll be a really good time for us to cover um, some of these MLA issues if that's what you're really gonna struggle with in this essay. So when I say MLA documentation, I'm talking about two things. Number one, I'm talking about in-text citations. Number two, I'm talking about works cited pages, and I want to give you a real quick overview of what each one of those entails. So an in-text citation is simply a place within the paper where you give credit to a source you've used in that research paper. Now, there are three ways that you synthesize information from a source. So you have an article, say, on the death penalty, because you're writing a paper about the death penalty, and you want to use something from that article in your paper. Three ways you can synthesize or, or take that material and put it into your paper. You can summarize it, you can paraphrase it, or you can directly quote it. All three of these, when you do that within your paper, require one of these in-text citations. Okay, what is an in-text citation? Well, it's a parenthetical cit citation, so it's, it's um, a reference that is bookended by parentheses. And it looks basically like this. Traditionally, um, a, a parenthetical in-text citation contained two pieces of information, the author's last name and the page number. So here's an example from you know, traditional print publications um, where you would have the author's last name, Smith, and the page number that came from, uh, 14. Okay, so you have Smith, 14, and that's it. These days, of course, a lot of us get our sources online, and because there's a lot less standardization in the way online materials are presented, oftentimes there are no page numbers, and so MLA has now said that, well, you don't really need anything else, all you have to have is the author's last name. To complicate matters further, many times online, not only do you not have page numbers, but you also don't even have an author for that article. In that case, um, as you see in this example here, you just use the first important word from the title of the article, and you put it in quotation marks. Now, by important word, I mean any word other than the the three articles in the English language, which are a, and, and the, okay? So notice here, I've given you kind of an example works cited entry for this article by Smith. Smith, comma, Joe, here's the title of the article, The Way to Use MLA, and it was published in the English Journal. Now this should be italicized, but it's hard to italicize <laughs> on a whiteboard, so I just underlined it instead. So this is what we've used in this particular citation here. It's just the word way. Notice I didn't use the because it's an article. Um, but this is what we do when we don't have an author listed for an online article. Now, one thing that I just want to point out to you real quickly that's um, important to keep in mind is when, when you're doing your works cited entries, I'm going to talk about works cited here in just a second, but when you're doing your works cited entries, um, what goes in quotation marks and what goes in italics. And here's a real quick breakdown of that. It doesn't cover everything, but you should be able to start to get that there's an actual logic to this. So things that go in quotation marks. Title of an article, title of a poem, title of a short story, title of a song. Things that go in italics. A book, a magazine, a newspaper, a journal, an album. Think about song and album. Title of a song goes in quotation marks. Title of the album that song is on goes in italics. So it's always the small unit, the article, the song, the poem, that goes in quotation marks. It's always the larger unit that contains that smaller unit that goes in italics, right? So the book that the poem is published in, the title of that goes in italics. Get it? Uh, you think about lots of things. Title of a movie goes in italics. 
the title of or the name of a particular uh, chapter or scene in that movie, like you've seen on a DVD menu, that would go in quotation marks. Right? That will come in handy whenever you're just trying to figure out what goes where within a works cited entry. So that's a real quick overview of in-text citations. Lots of other things that could be talked about, but you've got a great resource in your handbook for MLA stuff. Make sure you use that. So let's talk real quickly about works cited pages. For that, I'm going to pull down the screen here and we'll look at just an example page. Hopefully, you'll be able to see this um, without too much trouble. Uh, I just did a quick Google search here for a sample works cited page. You could easily do the same thing. Works cited page is a page that goes at the end of your paper. It's often a, a separate page. You see it's actually titled works cited at the top. It's still double spaced just like the rest of your paper. And then you have an entry with information for each of the sources you use in that paper. This particular example, which comes from Purdue's online writing lab, often uh, shortened to OWL for online writing lab, which is a great, great resource online if you haven't used it before for writing papers. <clears throat> a lot of times you do a Google search about a writing related topic, they will come up first and it is kind of the go-to place. Anyway, um, things to notice here. Uh, it's alphabetized, right? So the first source didn't have an author, but the title of the article began with the word business, so it's, it goes first, then there's an interview with Bill Clinton, um, that comes next, then, you know, on and on as far as that goes. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that when you're using online sources, you also need a, an additional piece of information, um, which is the date of access. Uh, we see that right here. I don't know if, if you can see this at home. Hopefully you can. But this article or web page was posted or published in 2007. Um, this date right here indicates that the author of this paper um, accessed that website on May 24th of 2007. And that's a real important um, piece of information you need to make sure you get for all of your online works cited entries. Again, there's a lot more information about this in the handbook online. Many of you probably know that some of the more reputable databases these days will actually create works cited entries for you. If you use those, only use it if it has a place where you can select MLA format. Otherwise, it's just going to give you a generic reference entry and it won't be an MLA format. Um, again, this is something we can focus on one-on-one -on -one in your conferences or when I um, provide feedback on your paper uh, just through desire to learn if that's the way you have to do it. Seems really brief, I know, but at least uh, you've had a little bit of a chance to hear me talk about it. Please, please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.